Apple's next generation Macs are going to be powerful and they're going to surprise you more than the first generation Apple Silicon Macs did. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss this saga on the most exciting Mac upgrades we've seen in years because I've been mulling over some leaked benchmarks on Apple's M1X processor, the chip that's destined for the next generation of Mac Macs, including the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and the new redesigned iMac. And from what I can see, if these leaks are true, the M1X is going to be a serious chip upgrade in more ways than one. And it might actually bring some negatives along with it compared to the current M1 chip. So stick around because you're gonna wanna learn all about this new M1X chip and what power we can possibly see out of the next generation of Macs. So this leak comes from CPU Monkey, which is a benchmarking site, and apparently someone with possession of one of these pre-production M1X chips ran a benchmark on that system, and then that got uploaded to this website servers. Honestly, sometimes benchmark leaks can be sketchy, but with Apple benchmark leaks, these things kind of happen all the time. And for the most part, even during the early production stages, they can give us a good indication of how performant these chips are actually going to be. So let's assume that these leaks are accurate. The first thing to note is that this truly is an M1X jump in performance because the architecture of this chip is the same base clock speed as the current M1 chip at 3.2 gigahertz, meaning that single core performance is probably going to be exactly the same as the current M1 processor. And that's not a bad thing. The current M1 chip easily beats out any other Mac on the market, including the $6,000 desktop Mac Pro in single core performance. However, that means that for basic app opening or just general speed of the user interface in Mac OS, we really shouldn't see much, if any, of a performance jump between the next generation of Macs and the current M1 Macs already on the market. Again, not a bad thing. The current M1 Macs are already wicked. There's a bit of Boston for you. Wicked fast for general usability, and this isn't really an area we were expecting to see too much improvement on with the M1X. However, that doesn't mean there isn't going to be any improvements. These chips are going to be placed in the MacBook Pro and iMac computers that are meant more and more for prosumer and professional use with higher end applications that take advantage of multiple CPU cores. Now, while the clock speed may be the same as the M1, the core count is significantly higher with this M1X receiving double the high performance cores, giving us an eight core processor with eight Firestorm cores, as well as keeping the four energy efficient cores that the M1 currently has, giving us a total of 12 cores. Here is where you will see one of the bigger performance jumps, because if these leaks are accurate, and to keep things simple, you're basically going to get around double the multi-core performance of the M1 chip. With simple math, and yes, I have to say simple math because I barely passed algebra, if you couldn't tell. If we look at the scoring of these benchmarks in a tool like Geekbench and double the multi-core score on the M1 Mac Mini, we get a multi-core score of 14,796. Just a quick look at the charts indicates that this processor jump would take us to the top of the charts in terms of performance with only the 24 and 28 core Mac Pro beating the M1X in multi-core performance. Mind you, that's only being beaten out by a huge desktop tower with even more cores. And this chip is going to be designed for a laptop and an all-in-one iMac desktop. And it won't just be a CPU jump because believe it or not, the M1X will actually have more GPU cores than CPU cores with Apple doubling the cores of what you currently get on the M1 chip, moving from an eight core GPU design all the way to a 16 core GPU design. This would give us a max GPU memory of 16 gigabytes 
and could fix the problems that first generation M1 Max faced with only being able to hook up to one external display in the case of the MacBooks and two external displays in the case of the Mac Mini. And that would probably let us hook around three external displays at once. And the GPU is one area where I thought the M1 chips needed the biggest jump in performance in order to fulfill the role of the dedicated GPUs in the products like the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the iMac. This 16 core might be enough to start making these GPUs start to feel more like dedicated GPUs rather than the integrated GPUs that they are. Also, I should note that this CPU Monkey benchmark indicates that the max amount of memory for this M1X generation will be 32 gigabytes of unified memory, which would double the current memory allowance of the M1 Max, which are currently capped at 16 gigabytes. So yes, we're making a lot of assumptions here, but this is a rumor video, so we have to flow with some simple logic here. But let's give Apple the benefit of the doubt. They've already shown that the M1 chip is capable of crazy performance, even in an M1 MacBook Air without a fan, all while using older body types that weren't even designed for the M1 chip. They were designed for Intel processors. So Apple is now free to make a design that can fully take advantage of their own Apple Silicon chips, which means that they should be able to fully take advantage of this M1X chips 12 core design in the CPU and the 16 core design in the GPU. Bearing that in mind, Apple will likely design these Macs with that mindset that these M1X chips will run at a higher TDP to power all of these new CPU and GPU cores, with this leaked benchmark saying that the TDP will run from 35 to 45 watts, and that's in comparison to the 15 to 20 watts that is currently on the M1 series. This makes sense. Even with the energy efficiency of Apple Silicon, Apple adding more cores means that the energy output of these devices is going to be higher. Of course, the M1 already had a lot of headroom when it came to thermal design, and the current generation of Macs run as cool as a cucumber. So I think even with this increased power draw, Apple probably wouldn't be facing any issues in thermal architecture like we saw on previous versions of the Intel MacBook Pro. However, that increased power draw means that potentially we may see a negative impact on battery life. Like I said before, these are new designs, so we could see Apple upping the battery capacity much like they did in the 16 inch MacBook Pro to compensate for this, but we also know that Apple loves to shave down on the weight, and if you're constantly running applications with heavy multi-threaded workflows, it stands to reason that if the battery capacity is similar to the M1 MacBooks, we may see a drop in total battery life compared to the M1 MacBook Pro, which just has a crazy amount of battery life. Even so, if Apple drops down a few hours or even goes down to 15 hours, these laptops would still have some of the best battery life on the market and offer the increased power that pros need. So it's a fair trade-off if they have to sacrifice some battery life to give us some performance gains. So yes, these next generation of Macs with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro and the redesigned iMac are going to be crazy powerful if these leaks turn out to be anywhere close to accurate. And listen, we already know from really trusted sources like Mark Gurman that Apple was working on CPU designs with even bigger core counts than this. And the 12 core design was actually one of their lower estimates. So it's pretty likely that this 12 core CPU design is accurate, but anyway, you and, and I for that matter, will both have to wait a bit longer to see that power because the earliest we are expecting the next MacBook Pros, which will ship with this M1X chip, is sometime during the second half of this year, and we are now expecting the iMac to ship sometime during the end of this year, so we still have a little bit longer to wait. But anyway, that's basically all we know about the next M1X chip and just how powerful Apple's next Macs are going to be. If you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, be sure to let me know what you think of the potential power of the M1X chip 
in the comments below. And if you're tired of waiting for this next generation of Macs, I got links in the description on the already amazing M1 Macs in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.